Hi everyone, uh, it's been a while. So today we're gonna to go through curved reflecting surfaces. So your concave and convex spherical mirrors uh, with a little example on that. Um, then we're gonna go through uh, thin lenses and applications of that. Yeah, so since we missed out on the lectures last week, uh, we're also going to have the Thursday lecture as well. So your um, the normal time on Thursday that you had for your um, uh, quiz and stuff, you know, that double period, uh, we're going to have that as a lecture period um, as well for optics. Um, and then on Friday, we're going to start off with the special relativity. Okay, so everything should be finished by Thursday. Okay, so let's just do a quick recap of the idea of reflection on a plane surface, and then we'll see what happens if the surface is then curved. Okay, so if we got a flat mirror or flat surface and we're looking at reflection, then if something is coming straight to the mirror, like so, okay, if it goes straight to the mirror, then it just bounces back. Okay, there's no angled reflection there. However, if a light ray comes in at an angle, then we know that we draw the normal line, the angle to the normal line, going in is the same as the angle away from the normal line going out. Okay, so we end up with this type of reflection. Okay, so this is plane surface reflection. Okay, so, you know, angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. Now, what happens if we have some kind of curved surface? So let's say we have, um, some curve, it can be a part of a circle or part of a sphere in the case for a mirror, or it could be some parabolic reflector, any, anything like that, as long as it's curved. So let's say we've got our curved reflector like this. Okay, so in this case, we can say this is part of some larger sphere. Okay, but then only the solid part is reflecting. So what happens if a light ray comes in? So let's say we've got a light ray coming in, it's going to hit. Now, I can draw that a bit better, sorry. Okay, so we've got a light ray coming in, it's going to hit the surface and, and it's going to reflect. Now the question is, how is it going to reflect? Well, what we can do is we can draw a tangent line to the surface. So we've got ourselves a tangent line, something like that. At the point of contact where the incident ray is, we can draw a normal line so that it's perpendicular to the tangent line. And again, it's going to be the same rule as before. The angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. So this angle here is equal to this angle uh, coming out like that. Okay, so we say that locally, like specifically at this point here, it follows that law of angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. And the same thing will happen to all of the rays. So let's say we've got a ray coming in like this, and we want to figure out where does it go? We do the same thing. We draw the tangent line to the mirror or to the curve. Okay, now that we've got a tangent line, we can draw the normal because we know the normal is going to be perpendicular to the tangent line. And we do the same thing as before. The angle of incidence, in other words, the angle between the ray and the normal, that's theta, is the same going out as well. Okay, so it's going to be something like that. Okay, now we see that these two rays cross at this point over here, this point over there. Uh, the point at where they cross here is called the focusing point or the focus. So we've got a bunch of light rays coming in that's parallel and they are being focused at this point or they converge to that point. So the light rays converge or are focused to this point. And we found this point just by using some geometry there. 
Now, something very interesting, and I'm going to leave that for homework, is that if we have the center of the circle, because remember, uh, this mirror forms part of a sphere. So you've got a big sphere, we take a portion of it, and that's going to be our mirror. So if we look at the full sphere with some radius r, and we look at this distance here, we call the focal length, the distance to the focus, uh, you can show with a bit of geometry that this focal, focal length, or the distance to the focus, um, is the sphere's radius divided by two. Okay, so you can do a bit of geometry, you can, um, you can show this fact. Okay, so I'll just leave this as some homework. Okay, um, so as we go through the lectures, I'll post some more homework. Um, and then I'll post the solutions at the end of the week. Okay, so that gives you some time to go through these. Okay, so that's the relationship between this focus point that we found um, and the radius of the sphere. Okay, and then we took a portion of the sphere and we made that into a mirror. Okay, um, the next thing that we need to look at is what happens if we're not only considering these parallel lines? Uh, what about the light rays coming from some object? Okay, so we have some objects, the light rays are going to hit the mirror, they're going to bounce off, and they're going to form an image somewhere else. Okay, so we would like to find what is the relationship between the distance uh, from the object to the mirror uh, to the image that's produced. Again, a little bit of geometry, but you don't need to know how to derive this, but we have that one over the focal length, which is just the property of the mirror that's fixed, is equal to one over the distance to the object. Okay, so that's um, the source of the light rays coming off, plus one over the distance to the image. Okay, that's the that's the part that we see coming off the mirror. Okay, we call this the mirror equation. Okay. okay, so that's the first but um, first helpful equation that we need to know. Um, and then the second helpful equation is the magnification of the, of the image. So if we go back to the plane mirror, uh, we see that there's no magnification. Whatever the heart of the object was um, going into the mirror, that's the same as the image. There's no magnification effects. However, for a curved surface, uh, we see that there is a magnification effect. So the image uh, can be uh, squashed or stretched uh, depending on the geometry of the mirror. Okay, again, we don't really need to know how to derive this. Um, we'll end up using it now. Uh, the magnification M is given by the heart of the image over the heart of the object. Okay, so that's your standard uh, magnification. So. Um, if the object, uh, sorry, if the heart of the object is doubled, uh, then we see how the magnification changes. So you can have double magnification, half magnification, um, and so on. Uh, but what we're going to be using is instead, how is the magnification related to the distances, the object distance and the image distance? This is given by minus the image distance over the object distance. Okay. Now, this is not so easy to see. Um, the form involving the hearts is pretty easy because the heart is being stretched by some factor. Uh, but this part over here, where it relates to the image distance and the object distance, um, I'm going to leave that for homework as well. So that's also a little bit of geometry. Okay, so a little bit of geometry to show this. Okay, so it's a little bit of trig. So you've got your, um, you form a triangle using the um, object. So you have a little, yeah, let's say you're something like this. Uh, your heart of the object like that, so it's going to have rays. Uh, then let's say your um, image is like that. Okay, so it's been squashed and it's offset. 
this is going to be your object distance. This is your image distance. Um, and then you can do a little bit of trigonometry there uh, to find that relationship. Okay, but I'm gonna leave that for homework for you to try out. Okay, so it's not too important to know where these equations come from. Uh, we're gonna be more focused on how to use them, uh, but it's a good idea to see um, you know, where they come from. Okay, so you can try that out if you want. Okay, so these are the two main equations that we're going to be using. Okay, the mirror equation and the magnification equation. Okay, now there's one more thing we need to go through before we look at the problems, and that is the various sign conventions. So what we have with these mirrors is that if it is concave or convex, uh, sometimes you use a plus for the distances, sometimes you use a minus. Um, if it's a real image or if it's a virtual image, sometimes you use a plus, sometimes you use a minus. Okay, so I'm gonna summarize all of that in a nice table, and then we can just refer to that table to see which sign we need to use. Okay, um, so these distances here, the image distance and object distance, they are signed quantities. Okay, so sometimes they're positive, sometimes they're negative, uh, depending on the situation. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so let's start off with the focal length. Okay, so we have the focal length F, if we have a concave mirror, then we say it is positive. If we have a convex mirror, then we say it's negative. Okay, so how do we tell the difference between concave and convex? Well, concave, you can think of it like uh, something like this. You got a little cave inside. Okay, so if this is like your mountain side or something, this rock here. Um, that's like a cave. Okay, so we can think of that as concave. Um, and then convex, that's the opposite. That's when it goes outwards like that. Okay, but as long as you remember what concave is, then convex is just the other one. Okay, so that is F. Uh, what about the image distance? So DR. If it is a real image, then we take it as positive. If it is a uh, sorry, if it is a virtual image, we take it as negative. Okay. Um, and then in the notes I uploaded, um, I went through uh, all the cases of when images are real and when images are virtual um, and when objects are real and virtual and so on. Okay, so those are in the PDF notes that I upload. Okay, uh, what about the object distance? Okay, we're going to take that as positive uh, because if we look at our examples, we're going to see that the object is always going to be on the left hand side of the mirror. Okay, so it, it's in front of the mirror, so we're going to take the distance as positive. Um, on the other hand, the image can be on the left or the right, either in front or behind of the mirror. So, depending on the situation, we're going to use plus or minus for that. Okay, so please just keep that in mind. Um, and lastly, the magnification N. If the image is upright, okay. in other words, um, it was upright to begin with, and then the image uh, matches that. So they, the, the, the object and the image are both orientated in the same direction. Uh, then we get give it a plus. And if it is flipped, Okay, so your object is pointing up, but your image is pointing down. Then we say the, um, the image has been flipped. Uh, we use a minus for that. Okay, so these are the sign conventions that we're going to be using uh, for the focal length, the image distance, the object distance, and the magnification. Okay, um, are there any questions so far? Okay, so it's just the conventions that we need to keep in mind 
uh, when doing the problems. Okay, so let's take a look at an example of this before we get onto the thin lenses. Okay, so example. Okay, and then just after this example, I've got a short video to show uh, just to explain um, what's going on here. Okay, so we've got some flat surface here, and then we've got a mirror. Okay, so now this is a concave mirror because we imagine this is like a cave in a hillside, right? Or you can just remember that it's concave, um, whatever, whatever you want. Okay, so let's say we've got our object. It's a little arrow like that. And it is 12 centimeters from the mirror. So this distance here, that's 12 centimeters. Okay, and it's in front of the mirror. Uh, the arrow is three centimeters high. Okay, and we're given that the focal length of the mirror is four centimeters. So we can draw our focal point over here, um, and that's at four centimeters. Okay, um, so that's our situation here. So what we want to find is the image distance and the magnification um, of said image. So find the image distance and the magnification. Okay, so where is the image and is it stretched or squashed? Is it right way up or is it upside down? We're trying to figure that out here. So uh, for the first part to find the image distance, we need to use the mirror equation. So we just write it down. One over F is going to be one over the object distance plus one over the image distance. Okay, we don't know what the image distance is. Okay, so F, it's given the magnitude of F is given as four centimeters. Now, if we go back to our little table here, we see that it's concave mirror so it's going to be plus four centimeters. If this was a convex mirror, we would have to use minus four centimeters. Okay, so it's one over plus four. Okay, and you don't need to put the plus because it's positive, but I encourage you to write the plus anyway, uh, just so that you can be sure that the positive things are positive and the negative things are actually negative. Okay, so it's just emphasizing the fact that this is a concave mirror, so we should be putting plus four. Okay, um, the object distance uh, we know is 12. More specifically, it's plus 12. Okay, so we don't want to get confused with the signs there. So this is going to be one over plus 12. Okay, we know for sure it's plus. And the image distance, uh, we don't know what that is. So it's one over dr. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve for the image distance. So one over dr is going to be one quarter minus one over 12. Um, so we can write that as uh, two over 12 or one over six. Okay, but that's the reciprocal. Remember, it's one over the image distance. Uh, don't forget to take the reciprocal to get the actual image distance. So the actual image distance is six centimeters. Sorry, oh, not six meters, six centimeters. Um, and just for added emphasis, it is plus six centimeters. Okay, so if your result is positive, uh, remember that means we're in front of the mirror. So if that's four centimeters, let's say this is six centimeters, um, it's going to be somewhere there. But we don't know the height yet. We know it's going to be at that red point at six centimeters. Okay, but we don't know the orientation yet. Uh, we're going to find that out when we look at the magnification. Okay, uh, but before we get to that, um, are there any questions about this first part? Okay, cool. Uh, let's look at the magnification. 
which will also give us the orientation as well. So that is the second equation, the magnification equation. That's given by the height of the image over the height of the object. Um, that's also equal to minus, don't forget the minus there, the distance to the image over the distance to the object. Okay, so we can substitute here to find out what the magnification is going to be. Okay, so we see that um, it's going to be uh, minus, oh, sorry, yeah, minus the image distance was six, the object distance was 12, so that is minus one half. Okay, so we can deconstruct this. The minus tells us that the image is flipped. Okay, so it was uh, pointing up. Now the image will then be pointing down because of the minus sign. And the half tells us that the heart has been halved. So the heart was three, it's now going to be uh, 1.5. So the half tells us that the heart is halved. Okay, so we know now that the image heart is going to be half of the original heart, uh, so 1.5 centimeters. Okay, so let's just fill that in here. Okay, so um, it's going to look something like that. Okay, so there is our image. Um, and just note uh, that the image is being formed on the uh, left-hand side of the mirror, where the object is. So in other words, the object and the image are both on the same side of the mirror. Uh, now, you, you might think this is really weird because when you looked at the plane mirror, you had your object here, and the image was on the other side. Okay, well, it was on the other side of the mirror. In other words, if you looked at the mirror, um, you saw it ahead of you in the mirror. Now, in this case, we see that it is on the same side. Okay, so uh, what does that actually look like in real life? Yeah, so I just want to show you a short little video on this. It's a, a nice optical illusion. Uh, just share it here. Uh, you might have seen it before. Okay. Um, uh, can you see the screen here with YouTube? Okay. Uh, can someone just give me a thumbs up if you can see it? Okay, yeah, cool, you can see it, okay. Um, so I don't know if you've seen this optical illusion before, but let's just have a look. Um, this explains what we saw in this calculation where the image is actually on the same side of the mirror as the object and you. Okay, so let's just have a look here. Okay, so uh, just pause it quickly. We can see this is a little uh, toy pig. Um, it looks real, right? It looks like it's standing on something and we can see underneath, it uh, looks like there is its reflection at the bottom there. Okay, so it looks real, right? Let's just carry on watching. Uh, but it's not, you see he tries to grab it. Um, it's not a real, okay, so it looks really real, uh, but it's not, it's actually just the image of the object that is underneath, okay. Now, there we go. Okay, so um, enough of that. Let's go back to this. So we see we have the same sort of thing happening um, in this example. If the image is on the same side as you, you're going to think it's some object there, uh, like we saw with the little toy pig uh, being there. Okay. Um, any questions on this so far? Okay, um, so that little video is just helping you understand uh, what does it mean for the image to actually be um, on the side here. So um, it does look real. Okay, uh, but please uh, don't confuse real looking images 
with this idea of a real image and virtual image that we defined before. Okay, so you know, even if it may look real, um, it might still be a virtual image um, as we defined um, in those notes. Okay, so um, if you are still confused between real images and virtual images, uh, please take another look at those notes there. Okay, um, so this is how we use the mirror equation and the magnification equation. Okay, so it's really not too bad. Please just keep in mind the sign conventions. Okay, so sometimes things are positive, sometimes things are negative. It depends on the situation. Okay, uh, before we move on to the lenses, um, are there any questions about uh, mirrors or spherical mirrors? Okay, uh, let's take a look at the lenses. Okay, so thin lenses. Okay, so lenses uh, come in two varieties. We have convex lenses and concave lenses. Uh, now it's similar to concave and convex mirrors, but the diagrams are a bit different. Yeah, so convex mirrors, uh, they look something like this. Okay, so this is a convex uh, lens. We see that on the left-hand side, we have that convex shape. On the right-hand side, we have another convex part um, and it's uh, sandwiched together like that. Okay, so for convex lenses, we have positive focal length. Okay, same as with uh, uh, convex mirrors. Okay, and then concave on the other hand. Okay, so for here, uh, it looks a bit different. Um, it's something like this. Okay, um, so you see on convex, uh, the mirror is pushing outwards for concave, uh, sorry, not the mirror, the lens is going outwards. For concave, we see that the lens goes inwards like that. Okay, so that's just uh, what these look like. Uh, what are they used for? So convex lenses um, are used for uh, converging light rays to a focus. Yeah, so if you've ever played with a, a magnifying glass out in the sun, uh, you know that you can converge this, the light rays from the sun to a focus point, and you can use it to, to burn stuff. Um, that's a convex lens. So we took the light rays coming in and we focused it to a single point. On the other hand, for concave lenses, um, these are used for diverging light rays. Yeah, so parallel light rays going in would then diverge going out. Okay, so that's just a quick little summary of the differences between convex and concave. Uh, so let's have a look at the uh, lens diagram or the light ray diagram for the two lenses. Okay, so firstly, let's look at the convex lens diagram. So these lens diagrams just show us what happens to the different uh, light rays going in um, and what happens when they go out. Okay. So uh, let's say we've got our horizontal line here and a converging lens like so. Uh, we've got our object over there and we want to work out what happens uh, to this object. Okay, so where is the image and how does it look? So firstly, we're going to look at a horizontal uh, light ray coming from the top of the object. 
So the light ray is going to leave and just go parallel. Okay, so now I'm going to do this first one in detail just to show you how it works. Um, and then we're going to learn how it works and then just apply it uh, to the next, uh, next light rays. So let's just zoom in here and we're going to see what happens to this light ray as it goes through the lens. So uh, what do we do? We first draw a tangent line, like so. And once we have a tangent line, we can then draw the associated normal line. OK. So this looks uh, very similar to our um, interfaces that we looked at before. We've got a light ray coming in. It hits this red line, the, the red interface there, and it's going to move either towards the normal or away from the normal, um, depending on if it's going from air to glass. In this case, it's going from air to glass, so it's going to move towards the normal. Okay, so it's going to move something like this. Okay, very slightly over there. And now it's going to leave. Okay, so again, we can draw our tangent line. We can draw the associated normal line. And we know that it's going to move away from the normal like that. Okay, something like that. So we zoom out and we see this is the overall behavior of the light ray. So parallel light rays enter the lens and they leave slightly bent. This intersection point over here, this is the focus. Why is it the focus? Well, because parallel light rays went in and they get focused to the focal, the focal point. Okay, so that is the focus over there. Now, what happens over here with the other focal point? Okay, because this is symmetric. If there's a focal point on the right, there's a focal point on the left. So let's say a light ray enters uh, like so. Uh, try to draw a straight line. Sorry. Uh, roughly straight. Okay, so on the left hand side, we have a light ray going through the focal point. So with a little bit of symmetry here, um, I'm, it's not too hard to see that it should exit being parallel, uh, like so. Okay, so we just looked at the previous uh, line, the previous line, it was parallel, it then went through the focal point. So we just flip our perspective. If it goes through the focal point, then it must come out parallel. Okay, so you've got that symmetry going on there. Okay, um, and then this can actually continue, uh, continue it there. Okay, um, and then we see that uh, the image is formed somewhere over here. Okay, and it's upside down. So we see that for a convex lens, uh, we've got an um, upside down image um, on the other side. Okay, so that's just tracing the light rays to see what they do. Okay, um, are there any questions about this diagram? Okay, so I've just drawn two light rays here uh, with an image on the uh, left hand side of the focal point there. A uh, little homework exercise. Okay, so please do these homework problems. They're going to appear in your test. So what happens sorry, what happens if the object lies between the focal point and the lens. Okay, so um, in this picture, the image, the, sorry, not the image, the object was on the left-hand side of the focal point. So what happens now if I take it and I move it to between the focal point and the lens. Okay, what happens in that case? Where is the image produced? 
and what is its orientation and magnification um, and so on. Okay, so that's, um, that's uh, your homework question for convex lenses. Okay, um, any issues with this homework problem? Does everyone understand what they need to do? Okay, um, so that's for convex lenses. We see that they focus light. So we've got this object here and it gets focused on the other side. Uh, what happens if we now look at concave lenses? Okay, so this is number two, uh, sorry. Number two, Conca uh, concave lens diagram. Okay, um, so in this case, uh, just quickly remember concave lenses, they are used to diverge light rays. So if we have something like this, something like that, uh, parallel lines going in. Um, okay, you don't need to worry too much about this, but again, you can draw your tangent line then associated normal line, and we know by Snell's law what's going to happen. We can work it out. It's going to be diffracted and then diffracted again. It's going to end up out like that. Okay, so parallel lines do that. Um, and then on the other side, we can draw another parallel line going in, gets diffracted, diffracted again, going out like that. Okay. So we see how the light rays diverge after going through this concave lens. Now, if we look at these light rays that we see going out, okay, so, so all of these are going outwards. If we do a bit of backtracking and we see where is the apparent source of the light ray, because remember, if we're on this side, if we're on this side here, we don't see the light rays going in. All we see are these light rays leaving. So if we just think about these light rays leaving and we think about where would they have come from, all we can do is backtrack the light rays. So we look at this top one and we see where would it have come from? It comes from this point here. Okay, and then this light ray at the bottom, where would it have come from? We backtrack it along a straight line um, and we see it comes from here. Okay, so this is the apparent source of where these light rays are coming from. Okay, um, so we're gonna see why this is important now, uh, but are there any questions about this backtracking and apparent source of the light rays? Okay. Um, so let's look at what happens to an object uh, when the light rays go through a concave lens. So same as before, we've got our horizontal line here. We've got our concave lens and some object. let's say it's over here. Yeah, we want to know if the object is over there, where is its image? So let's draw a couple of light rays to see where it would go. So firstly, let's draw a horizontal light ray. Okay, we've got, uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, just give me a second. My stylus has stopped working. Okay, uh, it's back. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the horizontal light ray. It's parallel to the, to the ground, if you wanna think of it like that. Uh, we know from the previous image, what happens to the light ray, it's going to be uh, diffracted like that, and it's gonna go out like that. Okay, it's gonna diverge away from the horizontal there. Now we know that this light ray should be backtracked. 
to see where admarts have come where admarts have come from. Okay, so we think it's come from somewhere behind the lens like that. Now we can draw another light ray, a light ray going through the center. Now um, you can check with concave lenses and convex lenses um, using Snell's law that if the light ray goes through the center, it's unaffected, carries on going. Okay, so just make a little note. Line through the center is unaffected. Okay, and you can check that uh, using Snell's law. You draw yourself the tangents on either side, you find the normal lines, and then you apply Snell's law. Okay, and you'll see that the line is actually unaffected. Okay, so we can use these two lines to then determine uh, where is the image. Okay, so we see that uh, with looking at the intersection there, uh, the image is actually somewhere here. Okay, so it's gotten smaller um, and it is in front of the mirror. So here is the object and here is the resulting image. Okay, so you see it's uh, quite different uh, to the convex lens where the image was on this other side here, on the right hand side, after looking at the ray diagram. If we look at the ray diagram for a concave lens, we see that the image is on the same side as the object. Okay, because we had to backtrack uh, this ray, the, the one that shoots off um, upwards. We backtrack and we can see looking at the intersection, that's where the image is. Okay. Uh, but we know it's an image, uh, but the question now is, is this a real image or is this a virtual image? So question, is this image a real image? Okay, we know how real images are defined um, or a virtual image. Okay, so we need to look at um, how the rays form the image. Uh, and then by looking at that, we can tell if it's a real image or if it's a virtual image. Okay, if you're still having issues with real and virtual images, uh, please take a look at those notes. Okay, it goes through all of the situations that you can get um, and when it's real or when it's virtual. Okay, and there's a little diagram explaining the situation as well. Yeah, so it's quite helpful um, in these cases. Okay, um, are there any questions about convex lenses and concave lenses? Okay, uh, so last thing for today is looking at the thin lens equations um, and the associated sign conventions. Okay, so the thin lens equations. And the nice thing is the thin lens equations are exactly the same as the one we saw for the spherical mirror. Okay, so we have one over the focal length of the lens. Okay, so it's not a mirror now, it's a lens. So one over the focal length of the lens is one over the image distance plus one over the object distance. Okay, so we've got that equation and of course the associated magnification equation. So that's going to be the height of the image divided by the height of the object. That's going to be minus the distance to the image over the distance to the object. Yeah, uh, and remember the second part here, showing that this part was true, uh, that, was, that was one of the homework questions. Okay. Okay, again, a little bit of um, trigonometry. 
And you can use the thin lens diagram to show that this is true as well. So if we look back um, over here for convex lenses, we have the heart of the object on the left-hand side, the heart of the image on the right-hand side. You can use a bit of geometry and trigonometry um, <clears throat> to show that relation as well. Okay, so you can either show this using the uh, geometry of the mirror, or you can use it, uh, you, you can show this using the geometry of the lenses. Okay, but um, in other case, you should be getting the same, uh, the same result. Okay, so these two equations we're going to be using, and of course, the associated sign conventions. Okay, because remember the focal length, uh, the distances, as well as the magnification, uh, they all come with either a plus or a minus sign, okay, depending on the situation. Okay, so let's look at what happens um, with the lens, with thin lenses. So uh, D naught, sorry, not D naught, DO, object distance, is always positive. Okay, so the object distance we always take as positive. DR, the image distance. If it's a real image, then we take, we take it with the plus. Okay, so it's positive for real images. If it's a virtual image, uh, we have a minus. Okay, um, and then the focal length. Um, if it is a converging lens, uh, it's a plus. If it's a diverging lens, then it's a minus. Um, and the magnification M, if it's upright. Okay, uh, so it's the same. So like here, um, let's just go back to this example here. Uh, for this example, with the co concave lens, we saw that the object was vertical, the image was vertical, so we take the magnification to be positive. Okay, but here the image is much smaller, so it's been squashed compared to the object. Okay, but it's still positive because it's um, in the same orientation. Okay, so that's plus. And if it's flipped, uh, like we had with the convex lens, we see that the image got flipped. So in that case, the magnification would then be negative uh, to show that it was flipped. Okay, so these are the, the sign conventions that we'll be using. Okay, um, are there any questions about this, uh, about these sign conventions or what we've gone through today? Okay, uh, so please go through those homework problems. Uh, they'll help you out with the test. I can guarantee that. Um, and then I will see you on Thursday for the double lecture where we will finish off optics. So we've got uh, thin films uh, to do. I just want to go over um, the equation for that and the quantum mechanics of how that actually works. Um, and then after that, we will take a look at diffraction gratings. Again, the equations for that and the quantum mechanics behind that. And then on Friday, we will start off with special relativity. Okay, and uh, please note uh, that with the special relativity, I'm actually adding on to the notes that are already present. So you can look at those notes and the lecture videos that are already there. However, I will be adding stuff and that stuff will be tested. Okay, so um, you can't miss out on those lectures. Okay, um, any questions about that plan? Okay, cool. Um, I will upload this video shortly so you can have a look at it again. Uh, but please do give those homework problems a go. Uh, they will help you out in the test. Okay, I'll see you all on Thursday. Bye, everyone.